Venomoid snakes, we have a very, very old copperhead, which is probably 20 something years old. We have a, a, an elderly black Pakistan cobra. We have Papa, who's also elderly. And these are just animals over time that we've, uh, we've gotten into our collection. You know, we, we've always got it after the fact. Somebody gives it to you or it's a seizure. And that's, you know, you work a fishing game and occasionally, you know, somebody has it and then they find a home for it. And we're happy, you know, to be a home for that. This is Papa, and Papa is a devenomized king cobra. A long time ago, when he was a baby, uh, he was devenomized by a veterinarian, and then somebody had them, had him as a pet, and then eventually gave it to us at New England Reptile, where he's resided this whole time, and we've uh, socialized him so very much that uh, he's very, very confident and calm and trusting and that is why he doesn't bother the hood right now unless I was uh, something that made him fearful like another king cobra or excited him like another king cobra one thing you'll note since Papa has his venom glands removed since the baby uh, some of the techniques that they use they'll uh, put silicone or they'll put glass type of glass beads and packing so the head remains full but since Papa is so very very old this happened a long time ago and they weren't doing that when they did these surgeries. So Papa had his venom glands removed. King Cobras have very, very uh, large venom glands that are quite long. And that is the reason why Papa's head is a little thinner than my other King Cobras. Uh, but he also has, he has his fangs and he's otherwise very intact. But the good thing about Papa, Papa shows a much softer side of what these animals are capable of. And I, and I view that as because he's an ambassador. He gets people to uh, realize that these animals are not killing machines. They don't want to hurt you. And uh, it helps develop empathy. And the most important thing is we don't have an empathetic relationship or thought of these animals. We don't value them. We don't care about their feelings. We don't care about their plights. We don't care about their status in their wild. We don't care about how other people view them. And it's very, very important because uh, throughout all of New England Reptile, we educate people, we cause people, we're trying to get people to think about these animals in a way where they will give it value. And they might also think about a rainforest, they'll think about a coral reef, they'll think about the forest down the street that's being developed, or maybe be replaced by a parking lot. These animals are vanishing. They're, every single day there's less of these animals and this is a wonderful animal that's highly intelligent. He's very thoughtful. He has no worries at all. Uh, he, he's otherwise uh, literally perfect. And he also might be meeting Lilith at some point. And that might actually be the proper male for Donnie's Making Faces. I was gonna say, well, wouldn't the babies not be venomous then, Kevin? And I thought everybody would be mean to me if I said that. No. <laughs> So Papa's the biggest king cobra yeah, you have. Yeah, this is this is right now presently my biggest king cobra. Okay. I have other king cobras that are ultimately going to be bigger than him, I'm sure. And we don't like we don't crank the food to to this guy. Uh, but uh, he'll eat both uh, rodents and occasionally a frozen snake. Uh, and I, I, I do think having uh, snakes in the diet is ultimately uh, just like a, a better option to keep the diet. I also actually eat. Uh, this guy eats uh, quail and chicks, so we give him you know, very diet. And our other king cobras, are, are uh, ones that we're raising, are eating all sorts of different things, but we include rodents, sometimes snakes, and chicks and quail, you know, types of poultry. And sometimes, stillborn little water monitors. I want to be clear with everyone, this is not a venomoid. I use my hooks, even though you, you feel propensity to maybe overstep your reasonable boundaries, but as a venomous snake owner, I have permits 
and I must always be responsible. I have to always be responsible for the audience around me because, you know, God forbid anything were to happen, I need to be on my best point. So I'm always using my tools and you always just uh, be aware of the worst case scenarios. And it's also important, this animal over time is becoming more and more social. So as it becomes a 12, 14 foot adult male, that is a huge size. That's a worrisome animal uh, without some degree of a relationship with that animal and always use your tools. But this is a venomous animal. Uh, it's never done anything. We've never had any venomoid surgery done on any of our snakes. One of our venomoid snakes is a king cobra. His name is Papa. We've had him for a long time. He was given to us, so we have nothing to do with the surgery. But in my opinion, he's the ambassador of when people consider a king cobra, they might think of this, this hooding animal, menacing, biting. And then you have the complete difference where you have an animal that is so socialized and so trusting of us, uh, he very rarely will, will hood. If I were to show Papa this king cobra, then that a lot of times causes him to hood and reacts and he starts behaving more like a king cobra because he's threatened by other king cobras. This is obsidian. This is a black Pakistan venomoid cobra. And uh, so this is very a very old snake that somebody had as a pet at one point. And believe it or not, years ago, there was a few people doing the venomoid surgeries that you could get these and purchase these. And uh, those people, I think, have since stopped doing all of that and gone out of business. But this is a very old animal. And, uh, he, oh, he's, yeah. <laughs> so sometimes, Cobras do this little trick and they'll start rubbing against you and then they take a little, uh, they try to like gnaw on you a little bit. But uh, all he wants to do is he wants to go back into his hide box. And uh, right now he's opaque, so he's shedding. So his vision is uh, it's not so good, but he, see, there you go. So he tries, see, he's confused. And, he, and so instead of biting me, he, he tries, to, there you go. Hi buddy. Now, why do we still have uh, obsidian? What, I love him. Okay. He's, he's, when we use him for uh, education, we're always using him for education. He's, he's, he's wonderful. Okay, so I'm seeing these videos in India all the time of these really cool guys, you know, playing with their snakes. What keeps these people from getting murdered by their own snakes? Well, a lot of times they do a couple little tricks. They'll suture their mouth shut. They'll sometimes pull out the fangs. They'll also uh, maybe uh, try to milk the animal first just in case something bad happens. I have to try to always be responsible and uh, I don't want to showboat because I want to teach methods and uh, respect for the animal that as a hobby makes us look better. If I were to do stupid things and then I suffered some type of tragedy, likely that's going to reflect on the community or people will use that as some leverage against us. And I don't want to do that kind of thing. So I always have to be careful. And I always want people to be educated about these because really it's these animals that I love. You think everyone you know, should be able to own a king cobra? No. Okay. Not uh, at all. Okay. <laughs> very few. Very few. The more people that actually own king cobras, the more likelihood something bad will happen, which then will damage all venomous keepers. And so many venomous keepers are highly competent. They understand the use of their tools and uh, you know they just they articulate through it. And when somebody does something stupid, they represent the venomous community and that really is damaging to them. This is a Southern Copperhead. Her venom glands are still intact. So her, the space behind her eyes is nice and full. All the muscles are still right around those venom glands. And so uh, on the venomoids, you'll notice that they are kind of empty looking. So when they first started doing the venomoid surgeries, they would remove those venom glands. They'd remove the lines from the venom glands to the actual fangs themselves. And it would, uh, it would leave the snake looking kind of empty in the head. Whereas the venom, venomoid surgeries they started doing later, after they started doing it for a while, they would replace those venom glands with uh, silicone beads to make it look more full so it doesn't look like it's had the surgery done to them. But there's hardly any vets that'll do that venomoid surgery anymore. Uh, that venomoid that we have is one that we got that was confiscated from someone who wasn't supposed to have it and then it got donated to us as opposed to being euthanized. So we use them for education to teach people about venomous snakes because venomous snakes get a really bad reputation. It's not really well deserved. So this is our 
Venomoid copper head right here. And you can see he's got some the sunken in head. He was actually confiscated from someone who wasn't supposed to have him. And he's got a little bit of stuck shed on him right now, so I'm just gonna pin him real quick so we can get some of that skin off. We really don't like restraining the venomous snakes in particular from behind the head. It doesn't really make them feel trusting of us, but uh, you know, when we get in situations like this, sometimes we'll tube them. Actually, that would probably even be better would be to tube them. Okay, just like that. Behind the head. There we go. All right. So you don't want your fingers to be below the mouth line because their fangs are super duper long and they can actually bite outside of their mouth. I generally don't want my fingers to be below the mouth line because their fangs can actually go outside of their mouth and they can still, I mean, if this was a, if this still had venom, they still would be able to inject venom from there. So you gotta be super duper careful uh, when you're pinning them. I also don't recommend pinning venomous snakes unless you've got lots of experience with it. Um, it can be very dangerous. The most, the best way to not get envenomated by a snake is to not touch it, leave it alone. So I got this guy right here, just behind his head just to get some of the skin off because he does have a little bit of stuck shed on. There you go. So you look right behind the eye right here, this area right here is a little sunken in. Um, that is from the venomoid surgery. And again, this is not something that we advocate or you know uh, suggest other people do. This is an animal that was confiscated from someone who wasn't supposed to have it. They had had the surgery done to it. Um, and we prefer all of our venomous snakes to be venomous. And you know, back in the day, we did get some venomous snakes or some venomoids, but nowadays we are much more into having our venomous snakes be venomous. Tick is like, no. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. Oh, something must, I think. I think it was an anaconda. Probably. God, I hate the way they smell. Yeah, they're All gross. Right. Oh, don't act like it's a good smell, Connor. It's not, it's a good smell. Pigeon toe. These are gray sweats, Donnie. Don't film that. All right, so we're gonna be pulling some reticulated python eggs right here. I got a soaking bin because after these females lay, it takes a lot of energy and water out of their system. So we usually pull the females out, set them up to soak for maybe an hour or so, and then we're gonna clean her off, put her back up into her enclosure right here. But we're gonna pull some really cool eggs from this golden child mochino. Let's take a look. There you go, there you go. All right. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna even pull this divider out because I was planning on moving her over to the other side. Maybe I won't. Okay, so you can see when a female lays her eggs, she's gonna be stacked right up on top. And if you take a peek between the coils in here, you'll see those eggs in there. So what I'm gonna try and do is be nice and safe. She's usually pretty good. So I don't think that she's gonna wanna try and bite me, but who knows? Let's see if we can get her off of here. Okay, come here, girl. Come on, come here. Okay. <clears throat> She pulls the whole stack of eggs over here. Come here, you're okay. That's okay, we're fine. I'd honestly, I'd like her to keep moving like she is, because if she starts moving like that, it'll be easier for me to pull her off. Come here, come here, come back around this way. There we go. Okay. So, take a look right here. You can see those eggs in there. It looks like there's some infertile eggs, some good eggs. So we'll hope for more good than bad. Let's pull her off right here. Okay. Boom. Oh, I almost got her. Oop, oop, oop. She rolled those, so we're gonna have to pull those, set them back up. Okay, here we go, there we go. What's up? It's on me. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Kevin, do the do the. <laughs> that he gets the fun part. Yeah. You pulling all the eggs? There we go. Okay, so we're gonna set her up in here to soak. Uh, this kind of gets the egg smell off of her because females can be hyper defensive when they still have that smell of eggs on them because they want to defend their their nest. So we're gonna set her up in here to soak for just a little bit, right there. Now let's take a look at those eggs. Okay. So you'll see that she rotated these ones right here, but we can see that the flat side was down here. So that'll go like that. Ah, I, I watched her flip. How did, you know that? <laughs> How did you figure that out? All right. Okay, so here we go. We got these three are probably infertile. There's another infertile right there. Uh, I gotta eat these. Mm. Oh, they're another infertile oh, right there. Three. That's bitty. <laughs> That's oh, look at this one. There might still be vasculization. Do you know what could happen? You could have an imperfect baby, so we must throw that away. <laughs> Because it's not that time. Okay, it's we got three big, right big there. Bear secret big bear secret. <laughs> big bear secret. <laughs> if not, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Of course, hit the notification bell. Your commentary we always really enjoy, even you haters. Follow us on Evil Morph God on Instagram, New Morph on Instagram, and of course, please also join our Twitch audience. So you can see all the hard work Donnie's doing to try to bring you content and, of course, keep it interesting. US Arc is our only voice, it's our only knife in the fight. So if we if you're worried about legislation and losing your rights to, or you're actually now it's your privileges, guys. It's not your rights, it's your privileges to actually be able to include these animals in your life. You need to arm US Arc. And you're gonna arm US Arc with your membership, your voice, and your support. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on! <laughs>